Welcome back, Principles of Accounting 2 students. This video is about process costing. You'll find this in Chapter 18 of your textbook. Some of you may find this to be the hardest material in the book. Some of you will just find it to be in the top 12 hardest materials in the book, but it's, um, it, it's something where nationally, internationally, students struggle a little bit, so it's very important to put some extra time into these first three chapters so you can get through this class successfully. Process costing, as we know, is appropriate for homogenous products. Those are products that are manufactured pretty much identical. Think nuts and bolts, orange juice, stormtrooper helmets, things like that, um, where from product to product, your costs won't change very much. Compare this to the prior chapter where we talked about job order costing. Remember, with job order costing, we used very unique products. An example of a unique product would be a Starbase. Here we have Cloud City, which would have a very different cost structure than an Ewok Village. So going back to this, on process costing, your costs are going to be accumulated based on your manufacturing process. Some of that would be mixing, molding, things like that. Or job order costing, your costs are accumulated based on the job. Cloud City, initial rural base, hot, hot, hot ice planet, etc. So the process that I chose, and we could have chosen any process, is making st stormtrooper helmets. So we have a whole list of them here. If you notice, you know, stormtroopers, if you remember, are clones. They are all identical. Same size, same shape, same weight of material. So it's a different concept from job order costing where every helmet would be the same. Very low customization. We broke these down to three unique processes. One is taking the composite armor, which is what the Stormtrooper helmets are made out of, and putting it into a plastic mold, or not a, pl a mold, basically, so that it gets its general shape. Second thing that they do is they glue the insulating barrier, you know, that's the heat insulation, onto the inside of the helmet so that, you know, they can go out into space and they can handle extreme temperatures. The last process in the manufacturing cycle would be the spray on the anti-blaster mesh and the magnetic shielding. Now you can learn more about the Stormtrooper helmet making process by going to this website down here. It's actually um, Wikipedia, which is hilarious. And here's a graphical version of what's going on to make these helmets. If you notice up here, we start with this molded composite armor. It's basically a plasticky material. It's in giant vats. They heat it to a certain temperature and they pour it into helmet shaped molds. Now these are seashell shaped molds. The internet didn't seem to have a good stormtrooper mold. But you know, you put that in there, you let it cool, and that's your first process. Now what happens is you accumulate certain costs. Actually, did I do that backwards? I didn't. We're good. Erase that. Erase that. You accumulate certain costs in this process here. Mostly, if you notice, we're, we're doing raw materials. And actually these are kind of cooked materials, aren't they? Because it's molten. But this is your raw materials. You have a little bit of labor. You need somebody to take the little vat and dump everything into the mold and then pop it out of the mold at the end of the day. You have some overhead you know, as far as you know, cleaning the mold out in between hand. All, electricity would be overhead. You know, depreciation on these things because these things don't last forever. So you have some costs associated with this process. Those costs are then transferred over to the second process. And the second process is actually creating the glue or gluing the insulation barrier onto the inside of the helmet. And here's a picture of what they're doing. So you're putting all this stuff in there and you, what you do is you, um, you take some Ewok glue made, made from real Ewoks. And I actually found a picture of this on the internet. It's, it's brilliant. And it makes the the uh, material stick into the helmet. So that's, um, again, there's some costs there. So we have your transferred in costs. You have additional labor costs. This is going to be a little bit more labor intensive because somebody's got to actually fit the molding in and press it down with their hands and squeeze the glue. You're going to have a lot more overhead because you don't really track ounces of glue per helmet. You estimate it. Um, and of course you'll have a little bit more materials with the actual um, coating the barrier itself. So now what we do, we take 
the money there that was transferred in and then we accumulate a bunch of costs and both of those are transferred to the final process and this is where you have the guy powder coating the anti-blaster shielding and the anti-magnetic stuff and then, you know some paint and some polish onto the final product now again you know it's a little bit labor intensive but mostly you're using paint and overhead depreciation you know the, the cleaning the black and cleaning the spray bottles and spray cans etc all these costs turn into the cost of making the product all right a couple of concepts to remember from your extensive reading in this chapter is we have something called transferred in costs and we've already discuss that and all transferred in costs are our costs that were accumulated during the prior process that come to your current process. The second concept would be your cost accumulation. So that well, really what that means is that you're taking it's very similar to transferred in costs. It might even you may even consider it the same concept, but you're accumulating the cost of a helmet throughout the process. So for the molding, for the spraying, for the gluing, all those costs accumulate into the final product. Based on these concepts, we can take some real data and complete a job on our cost sheet to figure out how much the Empire is paying to make a, a Stormtrooper helmet. So here we have, let's see if I can draw this, we have the three major processes and we have the costs associated with them. Clearly I am not an artist, I'm an accountant, but here are the three processes. We have molding, we have gluing, we have spraying. And over here we have what the categories of the costs are. We have some beginning work in process. We have some stuff started in the production. One of the things worth noting, very important, on these cost sheets, we talk about units and we talk about costs. And these are separated here by big bold headings called units and costs. So here we have 10,000 units, here we have $50,000. Uh, see, should we just go into it? Other, oh, other things, little tiny things that are pretty important that you'll see in the book. When the actual material gets added, as far as what part of the process. So here I'm saying in the molding process, your raw materials are added evenly throughout the process. And that makes sense if you think about helmets coming off the, the line, you're gonna put the material in as you're making them. You're not gonna put them in at the end because then you wouldn't have a helmet. Your conversion costs, if you remember conversion costs equal labor and overhead. And that is the cost to convert raw materials into finished goods. Oh, well, it looks like something from a chemistry world. Those are gonna be added evenly. And for all three products, these are going to be added evenly throughout the process. That's fair. Some, some areas they'll be added in the beginning, some they'll be added in the end. Your materials for gluing are going to be added at the beginning of the process. And for spraying, they're going to be added at the very end of the process. So that's going to change how we account for some of these costs in each process. Let's take molding. We have 10,000 units in our beginning work in process. Now that's stuff that we started working on, but we didn't finish. And then during the month, we started another 150,000 units, and we finished and transferred over to gluing 155,000 units. This is saying that the stuff that was in beginning work in process is 50% complete, and that the stuff in ending working process is 25% complete. All right, let's start playing with this stuff. As you see over here, this is your production cost report, and I created three of them, one for each process. So we go to the molding, which is your first department, and up here, this part only talks about units. It does not talk about dollars. Other thing to note is this is an Andrew Holt column here. It's not in the textbook. And it's called percentage complete. And really, all you're doing is putting percentages of completion in here. If you ignored this and just 
did everything like it was in the book, you'd be absolutely fine. Some textbooks use it, some textbooks don't. So we have units to account for. Beginning work in process. Now bear with me, I'm going to have to flip between this tab and this tab. So my beginning work in process for molding is going to be 10,000 units. And I know I started 150,000 units. So here, my beginning is going to be 10,000 units. 10,000 units. And we started 150,000 units. From there, I can add these two. And that tells me I need to keep track of 160,000 units. All right, that makes sense. 10, 50. Now here it says I transferred out. Remember, transferred out means I finished the stuff. It's over, it's gone. So under here, units accounted for. Of this 160,000, 160, 155, thousand were transferred out which means I've got five thousand dollars five thousand units sorry got money on my mind which is a song I have a hundred and sixty thousand units to account for I have of that hundred and sixty hundred and fifty five were transferred out five thousand left that means I've accounted for all 160,000 units. So the first thing you want to worry about, if that doesn't equal that, we have a problem. We, we lost some units somewhere. You lost those little units. All right, so here's the percentage completed. All this is asking is what percentage are these units completed? Well, we know transferred in, it's the first process. Well, that should be NA, not NZ. Yeah. So you're, you don't have transferred in costs ever in the first process. In the second process you will, but not in the first. Okay, so direct materials. Well, if something's completed and transferred out, that means it's complete. That means it's 100% complete. You could also do that for conversion costs. If something is completed and transferred out, it's 100% complete. Otherwise, it wouldn't be complete. So then we have to worry about our ending work in process. Let's go back here. Ending work in process complete for molding. It's going to be 25% complete. And remember, your materials and your conversion costs are added evenly in this process. That's important. So that means these are 25% complete. Now this is where we get into equivalent units. So four units that are 25% complete, from a cost tracking standpoint, equal one complete unit. I'm going to just double check my numbers. Yes, 25%, 25%. We're good here. Now, if the materials were added at the beginning of the process, that would be 100%. If conversion cost was added at the end of the process, it would be 0%. If it was added halfway through the process, we'd look up here and figure out, well, our beginning was 50% complete, therefore, blah, blah. Don't have to worry about it. Okay. Transferred in is going to be zero, again, because it's the first process in line. And we can add this. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this formula so it will automatically add for me. My direct materials. 155,000 times 100 percent should be 155,000. Your direct your direct materials for ending work in process. 5,000 times 25 percent, 1250. And you just go right along like that, nice and happy. And then you might ask yourself, what does this mean? And that, that's, um, that's a good question. What does this mean? What this means here is that from a cost standpoint, like we know we've accumulated a certain number amount of costs, and that cost is going to be divided into what's equivalent to 156,250 units. That's all that's saying. It's a really fancy way of figuring out how much your per unit cost is. All right, notice there's a lot of blank space. That's good. 
It's um, isn't that a Taylor Swift song? I don't know. All right, cost to account for. We have beginning work in process. Come over here. Now we go down to our costs. Here's our beginning work in process. Transferred in costs are zero. Why? This is the first process. Beginning work in process material is going to be 50. And your conversion costs are going to be 10. So what do we have here? Our beginning work in process. Zero for transferred in. And I think what I'm going to do... Notice we're going from here where it's in a up and down. I would call that, I'd almost go so far as to call that or vertical. Almost messed that up. And moving it to horizontal. That's okay. Your total costs, you're just going to add the three. And I can show you a shortcut for that later. Your costs added during the period. You're going to come right down here. There's your direct materials. And then here's your conversion costs. Your conversion costs are just these added up. So we've got 750 in materials, 150 in conversion, zero still there. And we have $900,000. Down here we're talking about $900,000. Up here we're talking about 156,000 units. So really you're talking about nine bucks a unit. So it's not, you know, that makes sense. It's not ridiculous. If it was $9 billion for a helmet, you'd be like, okay, I messed up a zero somewhere. Now let's add these up. This tells us the costs that we have to account for. So very similar to up here where we had to figure out the units to account for, these are the costs to account for. When we come down here, these costs will equal those costs. And then you want us divided by the total equivalent units. All you're doing here, and, and some folks drop this column off because you don't really need it, but, but that's all we're doing. It doesn't make sense. Leave this blank. That doesn't make sense yet. But all you're doing is you're taking this 800, dividing it by this number. That's still zero. Equals uh, divided by that. And we're saying that our direct materials cost about five bucks a helmet and 12 cents. Here, your conversion costs are about $1.02, which makes sense because your first process looked like it was very materials heavy. And then you can add these up. And so far we've accumulated $6 of cost per helmet that we made. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make these zero because again, no transfer costs. Here they're asking, all right, well, five bucks a helmet, of these helmets, we completed and transferred out a bunch, and we have a bunch in ending working process. So I take the five bucks a helmet, and I multiply it. Here, so your units completed, transferred. And here I can take the five bucks a helmet, and multiply it by my ending work and process. This is nice, because really what this is saying is this 155,000 helmets had $793,000 worth of costs and the 1250 that's still there still has $6,400 worth of costs associated with it. Other things we're going to do here, we're going to make them dollars and we're going to get rid of the decimal places. Now here's some, well here let's add these up. Here's the other piece of magic that's really worth knowing. So we have $800,000 worth of costs for materials. And we have $800,000 worth of costs for materials there. That tells you, you may, may, maybe you didn't do it right, but you probably did. But you at least didn't lose any money. Right? There's not like anything just hanging out there, you know, fractions of pennies or anything. You're good. All right, here's some magic with Excel. I just need to do it that way. That copied all the formulas over. So again, 160 equals 160. We're good. So that's with your conversion costs. Now with your total costs, that won't work. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you the sum formula. So 
So now you have $960,000 worth of costs accumulated for or accounted for, and there's $960,000 worth of costs. So all your costs are accounted for. One last thing, this 952320. That was cost that's transferred out. Where was it transferred to? It's transferred to the next process in the line, which is your gluing department. This is where we're gluing the, you know, the the I don't know, protective gear and stuff on the inside of the mask. So this 952320, where does that go? Well, we've got cost to account for cost added during the period right there unfortunately I can't pull that off all right 952 320 so now we're accumulating the costs so what is well we can get back to that in a second so now we have the gluing department let's go back to our data Here's your gluing department. It doesn't look like I spelled it right. I may have $2,000 in beginning work in process. And I'm asking you to calculate what we started. We'll get there in a second. $2,000 of beginning work in process. What was transferred in? That comes over here, right? Here it was transferred out, 155,000 units. Here it's transferred in, which means we have 157,000 units to worry about, of which how many were transferred out? Go back to your data. Transferred out, 145,000. So we have 157,000 units that were either transferred in or were here when we got here in the morning. We finished 145,000. We got 12,000 left. And if we did this right, yes, we've accounted for all our units. All right. So now we go to the Andrew's magic box here. We have the completed and transferred out. So rule, you don't have to worry about it. Transferred. In costs are always 100% there because somebody transferred them in. Your direct material, so I, this entire row is always going to be 100% actually because they're completed. Anything that's complete, right, 100% is math code for complete. All right, so then our ending work in process for direct materials. How do we figure that out? Let's go back here. Materials are added at the beginning of the process. That means as soon as you start them, they're there, which means 100% of the materials have been added. You're good. On this one, conversion costs were added evenly. So then we come up here, oh, sorry, evenly. So come up here to ending work in process being 30% complete. Okay. Party's on. I'm going to show you something else here. Notice what this is doing. I want that times that. I think this is going to complete it for me. 145. Yes, it is. So what we did here with this formula at dollar sign is when you drag the formula, if you notice some of the things change, if you move it over a column, it tries to change the column. The dollar sign tells it not to do that. We'll cover that a little bit more in some other classes. But it's probably the handiest tool you could ever learn in Excel. Okay. So what do we have going on here? This makes sense. We had to account for this, and it was 100% complete. Therefore, we have 157,000 units of transferred in. 157 for conversion costs. We have 148,600 effectively complete, and we'll spread our costs out over that basis. Now we're down here with the costs. What is our beginning work in process? 
for transferred in costs. It's right here somewhere. $80,000. Oh, wait, no, $12,000. Always got to be, we're in gluing, right? We are gluing $12,000. And what's our direct materials? Our direct materials are going to be 8,000 and 12,000 in materials cost. Now we want to take our costs added during the period. That's 580 and 870. this to sum it and we can sum this now you'll notice that these costs should be higher than the last process because it includes the cost in the last process I'm gonna just tell check this 580 870 this 870 is just these two numbers added good to go here we're going to divide it by the total equivalent units. Again, this is the step that may or may not be there. Because all you're doing is dropping those down. But it makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? Okay, yeah, those are reasonable numbers here. Okay, so we transferred in about $6 worth of costs. Which, hey, look at this. We sure did. Um, 375 of direct materials, 594 of conversion. When you add these up, we have accumulated about 15 bucks to make the helmets, at least at this point. We're not done yet, but we're still in like relatively, you know, inexpensive helmet costs, so that's totally reasonable. Okay, now based on these, we have $6.14 per equivalent unit, and we take that times the completed and transferred out and we can take the 614 per helmet times the 12 grand and not grand 12,000 in ending work in process and just like before these two numbers are equivalent uh, they're not even equivalent they're the same okay so we know we did this correctly. We took our cost per helmet times the number of helmets transferred out. Took our cost per helmet times the ones that are still sitting there in the factory at the end of the day. And that covers our transferred in costs. We can drag this over two more. Doing the same exact thing, 588 equals 588. So we've accounted for all our costs that we need to account for. And if you want, you can total these, 2.4 million, that makes sense. Okay. Now what number, oh, this number here, we need that number. Because we have a third process, and that third process is the spraying department. So what skunks specialize in. So we have this number here, and it's a transferred in that's added during the process. I'm just going to do that, be done with it. I'm also going to take this transferred in equivalent unit and say, okay, completed then transferred out 145,000. Should be good. What's our beginning work in process units for the spraying department? We go back here. 8,000. And then we add these. So we're trying to account for 153,000 units that we've had somehow touched this factory during the month. Of those, we transferred out a bunch because we finished them, and that would be 150,000 transferred out in the spraying department which 
means 3,000 are left over. And now we've accounted for 153,000 units. That's good. If you, if you miss some units, then your cost gets all wacky. Remember, your transferred in costs are always 100% complete, and your completed costs are always 100% complete. So then let's go back here. Materials are added at the end of the process for materials, and they're added evenly here. Very important to know. Our ending work in process is 80% complete. So we know that's 80%. We know that's zero because they don't get added till the very end of the process. So our transferred in costs are going to be this times that. And I think I can go down one. And I think I can go over. Yep, sure can. 80% times three. Yep. And these are all summed up. So here's your equivalent units. Now I just have to add the costs and I'm pretty much done after this, which is nice because this video is going a little bit long. All right, so we have costs to account for. We, all, we were looking for our beginning work in process. Comes right here, beginning work in process for transferred in is gonna be 80,000. Also remember zero and 32,000. 80, zero. Why is this? Because we don't add the materials till the end. Costs added during the period are gonna be 300,000 for materials and 600,000 for conversion. We can sum these up. And we can sum this up. And we can even make that column a little bigger so you can see the number in there. Okay, now suddenly we're tracking three million costs. Now what's nice is those costs include the costs from here and they include the costs from the first process as well. Now we have our total equivalent unit that we want to divide it by. You just drop the numbers from five or six lines up down here. And you divide. You take the total cost accounted for divided by the equivalent units. You can drag this box over. It takes care of the math for you. I'm starting to speed up a little bit on this. What's nice is you can always hit pause rewind and listen to me forever and ever and ever or not all right looks like right now we have about 21 dollars per helmet which is great we probably sell them for 60. you know the emperor probably sells them for 60 but he also makes millions of these helmets a year um government issued so they're using the cheapest material so that, that, that's about that's about helmet costs especially in the 70s for a high-tech helmet all right so now we just got to account for the costs well, so for the ones that are completed and transferred out, we know we have about $15.52 in transfer costs per helmet. And we completed 150,000 of them. 15.52 times 3. And I think I can just drag these over. Add these up. Slap those in there. For those of you listening at home, boom, but a boom, but a boom, but a boom. Let's make sure these numbers are correct. How do I know they're correct? Is this 300,000? Hey, hey, look at that. Total cost accounted for 300,000. Total cost accounted for 300,000. This number equals that number. I know even though I went fast that I did it right because there's checks built into the system. So what does this mean? Well, this means if I wanted to sell, let's say, I, I'm gonna, let's take this number here, 2167. 
and let's say I mark it up 10% for a sale price. All right, you multiply it, and you do the magic, and my magic at the end of the day is use a calculator, and it's going to be 23. <laughs> I'm totally cheating here. 2383. Let's call it 2384. That would be my target sales price. So that's that number there. That's one way to account for it. There's lots of other things we can do with this number. Let's get rid of that. Uh, journal entry wise, what's your finished goods inventory number look like? Well, that's going to be th this number right here. All right, sitting there on the finished goods T account. Perfect. And then, you know, what do you have sitting in the warehouse? This number here. So there's lots of little things you can do about it, but I'm, I'm going right about 36 minutes, so I think I should just um, bid you adieu before YouTube boots me off for taking up too much bandwidth. You guys have a wonderful um, week, afternoon, evening, whatever it is um, you are doing when you're reading this. Take care.